Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, I welcome you. And if you're returning, welcome back. That's usually how I start. And that's how I will start today. Now, if you're a subscriber on my channel or you've watched other content of mine, you know I've done a lot of mobster uh, homes, graves, uh, locations, murder locations. I'm back in Chicago traveling through a few different states and there's something here today I wanna show you. You would have already seen the thumbnail or read the description, but today I'm gonna to talk to you about Lester Gillis. Lester Gillis who became enemy number one, a cohort of John Dillinger, but you know Lester Gillis as, of course, Babyface Nelson. Hoover develops a list of his most wanted criminal targets. On that list is Lester Gillis, also known as Babyface Nelson. Also known as Babyface Nelson. So today I'm taking you, I'm gonna show you his childhood home, where he was actually born and raised. I'm gonna show you the funeral home after the Barrington shootout where his body was brought to. I'm gonna show you where the Barrington shootout happened with the FBI agents and the plaque or the uh, memorial that stands there now. And then I'm also gonna show you his final resting place where he's buried alongside his wife, Helen. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about him throughout the video, but we're gonna start right here. We're gonna start right here at that brown house right behind me. Right there. I'll show you a better picture of it. On December 6th, 1908, he was born here in this house. Now, his parents were immigrants and her, his father worked at the Union stock, Stockyards and his mother tutored students for extra money. Now in 1928, he got a job driving truck bootlegging booze around Chicago and started doing favors for Al Capone, who had hideouts everywhere, both here and in Wisconsin. And his life was getting rough. He was running from the police. Now, after the Little Bohemia shootout, he actually became enemy number one. Now, not only was he born here, he was raised here. And these streets right here were all cobblestone. So these were all cobblestone streets. And he was only five foot four. So he actually, that's it. First of all, that's one of the ways he got the name Babyface Nelson. And he hated that nickname. He ran these streets uh, right here where I'm standing. He ran this neighborhood and would get in fights all the time. Now, like I said, I'm gonna take you to a few different sites. I'm gonna talk a little bit about him and what he did, but that's the home right there, right here on this street of Babyface Nelson. Come with me today. Let's go check out the sites of Babyface Nelson. He also went by a few other names. Um, but let's go on and I want to show you some sights. This is another site I wanted to show you. It's what happened right here. Now it's only a park now, but it's what happened in the history of Babyface Nelson. See, right where I'm standing, right here, that's the road out there. You can see the road behind me. That road behind me, Coming into here, this is where the Barrington shootout happened. Happened right here. And that really led to the beginning of the end for Babyface Nelson. Lester Gillis and another gangster, John Paul Chase, were in a running gunfight with FBI agents Herman Hollis and Samuel Cowley, Cowley's son, also named Samuel. You were how old when your dad died? I was eight months old when he was shot in Barrington. Cowley and Hollis, brought to Chicago to fight the mob, were killed that day in 1934. Today in Barrington, current and former FBI agents honored the men. Babyface Nelson was wounded in that gunfight and found dead the next day. Let's talk a little bit about it. 
See, it's an important location. Inspector Samuel Cowley of FBI Chicago office had been assigned to search for Nelson. Now, on November 27th, 1937, Cowley received word that Nelson had been seen driving a stolen car. Two agents spotted Babyface Nelson's car right near here, the car that he was in. Now, he brought his car around and started firing at them and they returned fire quickly. It turned into a shootout. Nelson veered off the highway at the entrance to the north side of the park, right here in Barrington. Now he stopped. Before Hollis and Cowley could get out of their car, Nelson started firing at them. Special Agent Hollis was killed during the gun battle, which only lasted about four or five minutes. Inspector Cowley, who was mortally wounded, actually died early the next morning. So now at this point, Nelson was mortally wounded. But Nelson and Chase get into Cowley's car and they take off in Cowley's car. Nelson was dr driven to a safe house where he actually ended up dying. Chase and Helen actually dumped his body near a cemetery for it to be found. And, and it was found. But it was right here where the infamous Barrington battle took place. Let me scan the area again. Now, of course, it looks a lot different now, but that's the main road out there. He would have veered off the main road right into this area, and that's where he engaged with his gun battle that took the lives of Cowley and Hollis. But there's something here that marks the spot in honor of the FBI agents that lost their lives. Let's go check it out. And you can see the American flag, but this stone right here, is the stone that represents Special Agent Carter Baum, Special Agent Herman Hollis, Inspector Samuel Cowley. And as it says, you cannot choose your battlefield. The gods do that for you. But you can plant a standard where a standard never flew. In the early 1930s, our nation experienced a dramatic rise in violent crimes and criminal activity. John Dillinger and Lester Gill Gillis, also known as Babyface Nelson, were two of the more notorious Midwest outlaws in this area. The men and women of the Chicago field office of the FBI played an important role in combating this crime problem and three employees made the ultimate sacrifice. On April 22nd, 1934, FBI Special Agents Carter Baum, J.C. Newman, both of the Chicago FBI office, along with a local constable, raided a hideout of Babyface Nelson at Corners Corners, Wisconsin. In an ensuing gun battle, Special Agent Baum was killed. Special Agent Newman and the constable were wounded. Nelson escaped. Now, right at this site, on November 27, 1934, FBI Inspector Samuel P. Cowley and Special Agent Herman Hollis, both of the Chicago FBI office, attempted to apprehend then public enemy number one, Babyface Nelson. Now, a running gun battle ensued along Illinois Highway 14, which ended near the entrance to Langendorf Park, exactly where we are. Both Inspector Cowley and Special Agent Hollis were mortally wounded, as was Nelson. This plaque is dedicated in grateful memory to these FBI employees who gave their lives in the performance of their sworn duties. And it lies right here in memory of the FBI agents who engaged Lester Gillis, Babyface Nelson, in a gun battle that absolutely changed everything and really spelt the end. Alrighty guys, there are other Lester Gillis, Babyface Nelson sites I want to show you, so let's go check them out. Alrighty guys, another site I wanted to show you was the funeral home where Babyface Nelson was brought. See, after the Barrington shootout, Helen and Chase dropped off his body outside a cemetery so that he could be found. 
Well, his body was brought here to a funeral home. Let me show it to you. Right there. Do you see that building? Sadowski Funeral Home sat right here. And I'll show you this picture. Check out this picture. You'll see a crowd gathering out front when Lester Gillis, Babyface Nelson, his body was brought here. But this is the funeral home where he was brought. See, I'm at 1845 North Hermitage in Chicago. This building right here that you see that I'm walking along was a funeral home. At 7.30 in the morning, Philip Sadowski, the owner of a funeral home, he receives a phone call from a man with a rough voice to inform him that the body of a man named Gillis was lying in a graveyard in Nile Center, a block from Harms Road. Now, Sadowski told him he was unable to retrieve the body. He was in the midst of preparing for a funeral. And besides, he added, morticians don't, don't recover bodies. Now, let me show you the back of the building. There's the garage right there. This is the garage right here where Babyface Nelson's body was brought in. So let me get back to what I was telling you. Now, he gets a phone call at seven o'clock in the morning and he says, no, no, morticians don't retrieve bodies. Now, the man on the other end of the line told him to notify anyone he wanted to, but that he wanted him to handle the arrangements. So the arrangements for Lester Gillis were hand chosen. Now, Sadowski reported the anonymous call to the Chicago coroner's office and was advised to contact the Nile Center police. Nelson's body was laying in the grass. Now, he was naked except for the cloth strips that had been wrapped around his waist, and he was drenched in blood. Now, his right arm was across his chest and his left hand was frozen into a cloth just above the wound in his stomach. His feet were crossed and the agents realized he'd been dead for long enough for rigor mortis to set in. The body was picked up, carried to a car, and the fingerprints confirmed that the body was Lester Gillis, Babyface Nelson. They handpicked Sadowski Funeral Home to cover the arrangements, even though Sadowski did not go retrieve the body. But this is it right here. That's the funeral home where Babyface Nelson, Lester Gillis, was brought. Alrighty, now that we've seen that site, let's go pay a visit to another site of Lester Gillis, Babyface Nelson. Let's go. Alrighty guys, so I've told you a little bit about Lester Gillis. I've showed you his childhood home and I've showed you where the Battle of Barrington, which ultimately killed him, I showed you where that took place. Now, as I had mentioned, he was taken to a safe house by John Paul Chase and his wife, Helen Gillis. He passed away and they dumped his body near a cemetery. It wasn't this cemetery, but this is the cemetery that he's buried at. So I'm going to show you his final resting place. There's Helen Gillis. That's his wife. Helen Gillis died July 3rd, 1987, age 79 years old. She died so many years after him. There's the sun and there's the grave someone left some coins of Lester J. Gillis baby face Nelson he died November 27 1934 age 26 years old in the shootout at Barrington there's his father Joseph Gillis died December 24th 1924, age 55 years old. His mother, Mary Gillis, died October 6, 1961, age 82 years old. And daughter, Eugene Gillis, 
died October 18th, 1918, aged 25 years old. But there is the final resting place of Babyface Nelson. Alrighty guys, I'm glad I got to show you some Babyface Nelson sites. The home where he was born, his childhood home, and where he met his end, but also took the life to FBI agents. But that's the final resting place of Babyface Nelson, Lester Gillis, right here. I appreciate you watching. I have more mob sites, true crime sites, pop culture sites, celebrity graves, filming locations. So subscribe today, hit that button below, subscribe, come on more adventures with me. I have some content I wanna share with you and I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks for watching today, guys. Peace.